Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Rewind that. It's your girl, Miss K. So we're going to be going over the latest episode of Marriage Boot Camp Hip Hop Edition. I actually almost forgot with all this quarantine stuff going on and trying to get out to them stores, I really almost forgot about this episode. So let's get right into it. Anyway, I hope you guys are out there being safe. So the episode starts off with Jocelyn. She's getting news that Stevie was granted custody of her daughter. So of course, you know, she's not feeling the best right now. And she's upset as she should be. Um, but I just don't understand what's happening here. I'm really confused about this whole thing. Um, I don't understand how it seems as if there's a case going on without her. But we'll talk about that a little more later because Ajwa kind of steps in. And she does ask the same questions that I was asking, all right, in my head. <laughs> okay, so anyway, the couples are called outside for their next exercise. And it's a game called The Naked Truth. So they have to answer the questions on the card. But if they choose not to answer it, they have to take off an article of clothing. So Dr. Ish is saying, are you more willing to bear your soul or your body? So uh, Stu's question, one of his questions was, have you ever cheated on your spouse? And he says, no, not so far. Okay, and of course, Michelle was rightfully annoyed with his answer, his response, because she was saying, well, why did he have to say not so far? Why did he have to answer like that? Why couldn't he just say, well, I haven't thought about it, you know, not that I've thought of or whatever, something, whatever she said, but whatever she said, she was right about it. Like he shouldn't have answered not so far. What kind of... And that's what Aja was saying. Aja was like, so basically you're saying that there's a plan in it for you to cheat on her. Anyway, this guy still sometimes is just, <laughs> he's, he's, he's a lot. But, you know, I'm starting to see him come out a little more. So, you know, I think that a lot of things is Michelle as well. We're starting to see that she needs to communicate with him better as well. Because I do think that Michelle be trying to act like, she don't really care about Stu like that. Like, oh, you can leave, you can leave. I don't believe that. I believe that that's probably her putting up a front. It's probably a defense mechanism of hers because she doesn't want to get hurt. But I don't think she wants to lose Stu. So she needs to start communicating that to that man and let him know that she cares about him because she kind of makes him feel like he's disposable. That's all I think. So anyway, so Bianca's question is, did you ever have a threesome? And she says, no, but I want one. So Dr. Ish is like, oh, you got to have a solid relationship before you do that. And I do not suggest you do that anytime soon. And that's what I was thinking. Like for me, it's like, y'all already got too many people in the relationship. So <laughs> you need to get all of that cleared out the way first. And then, you know, I don't know. But anyway, so we learned that Shawnee is a straight freak. Okay. She want to be chained up and all that stuff tied up or whatever and then we learn that she touches us herself like three times a week and i'm just like yo CeeLo, where you at brother somebody's lonely <laughs> anyway so uh the game is done and no one's clothes were removed because everybody decided to answer the questions so choses and bianca they go upstairs to get it in because bianca got horny and the other couple stayed behind to give Michelle and Stu some advice, especially Stu, because Michelle walked away. Okay, and meanwhile, Jocelyn and Ballistic are on the phone with little Bella, and they have to tell her that she's going to stay with her other family for a little while, and Jocelyn is trying to stay calm and say, I want you to be happy and have fun and everything, you know? So Ajwa goes in to check on Jocelyn and Ballistic, and they tell her what's going on, that Stevie wants custody of Bella, and a warrant for Jocelyn's arrest has been issued. So they have like 24 hours to, I guess, give the baby over to Stevie. Okay, and Ajwa is like, are you kidding me? And so this was my reaction, you know. Like I said before, I, I don't understand the whole thing, but Ajwa was asking all the right questions. She was all in my head. But, you know, it's it's so sad because Jocelyn was saying that if she doesn't give the baby up, she could lose her. And so Ajwa was saying something about a lawyer, like, you know, like, what does your lawyer say? And is he able to just say, I want custody and it just works like that? She was basically just trying to figure out how this whole thing could even happen. But Ballistic was even saying... I've never seen anything like this in my life. So everybody was pretty much as confused as I was 
because I just didn't understand because it almost made me feel like there was a case going on while Jocelyn was at boot camp. You know, so I'm like, I know daggone well this girl ain't putting this show over her child. Like, I doubt if she was doing that. I just didn't understand how they were able, the judge was able to rule and say, or grant CV custody and say, okay, yeah, take the, take the baby in the meantime. Like, I just, it was just too confusing for me. Okay, but Miss Chalet seemed to understand, okay, because she was answering all the questions. She seemed to know all the answers. And then she later let it be known that she had sympathy with Jocelyn because she'd been there before. Uh, but Ajwa, she was like, listen, I'm about to get my husband to call Stevie because this is crazy. So she did go and tell Styles what was going on. And he got the phone right away. But when he called, there was no answer from Stevie. So instead, Styles tries to encourage Jocelyn and let her know that it's only temporary and just look at it as if the child is bonding with her father. He was like, you good, sis. You don't gotta, it's only temporary. So, but Jocelyn feels some type of way because she feels like Ballistic is basically her child's father because he is the only man that she really knows and that she's ever really been around. Like he's been around her longer than any other man. And that's that's a valid point, okay? So Stu is starting to feel like marriage boot camp is changing or making it worse for his relationship, okay? And Michelle just feels like it's weeding out things they didn't know about each other before. But Stu's not feeling it. He says they're the weakest couple there, okay? And yes, I do get that. When you're around other couples and they seem to be you know, at least lovey-dovey at times and this and that. And y'all the only ones that seem to be kind of just on the outs or whatever. It does make you feel bad. So I do get where Stu is coming from. Okay, so then the boot campers have a little fun with Jocelyn and Ballistic because they missed the game. So um, Styles pulls out the cards and they play the Naked Truth game again to help lighten the mood. So they have a little fun. And then after that, Dr. Ish calls them in for their next exercise where they will do the sex role playing with the puppets. Okay. So when Stu and Michelle go up, we find out that Stu broke Michelle's celibacy, okay? Because he blows it up, okay? He blows up the spot that she cried when they first had sex. Anyway, so that was special to her because I guess she, we later find out that she can't believe that he told everybody that she cried, okay? Because I guess that's maybe she didn't want, maybe that was embarrassing for her, but she did let it be known that she cried because she felt like, she was happy that she finally found somebody that she actually wanted to have sex with. So, you know, and I'm pretty sure that made uh, Stu feel pretty good. Anyway, so then Jocelyn and Ballistic go up and she says she has a problem with Ballistic because he's never made love to her cootie cat before with his mouth. <laughs> so he's never went down on Jocelyn. And Jocelyn has said this in a, another episode. She did say that. And Styles was laughing when she said it and so was I. Okay. So anyway, they started going at it a little bit because she said, did you ever do it to your ex-girlfriend? And he said, we are not here for that, okay? Anyway, so the drill is over. And then after the drill, Stu and Michelle, they talk. And he says, you know, boot camp is really making me reevaluate things. And he says, things he wasn't thinking about before, he's thinking about now. And Michelle asked him, is it good or bad, you know? And he said, a little bit of both. So in the confessional, he was basically saying, look, I came in here, you know, I love Michelle, but I don't even know where my head is at right now. So Stu is pretty much confused these days, okay? Lastly, we have CeeLo, and he's in the bed with his woman, Shawnee, and he's picking a beef with her, okay? And I'm telling you, when I watched this, I just couldn't understand it, okay? He says that she made them appear to be disjointed, but Shawnee says she didn't say anything that wasn't untrue. She didn't say anything that didn't happen. And she gave her perspective and he gave his. Now, CeeLo is upset because Shawnee doesn't agree with him. So now he's saying that this typically would be something that they would argue about and then there's a tone and blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't know if he's bringing up the word typically because to me, they weren't having an argument. They were having a discussion and they clearly didn't agree because to me, the tone didn't change from either of them, especially not from Shawnee. So when he says that, oh, there's a tone or this and that, you know, he just was upset that clearly to me from the outside looking in, he was just upset that she didn't agree with him. That was, that's the bottom line. Okay. I don't know how this woman could win because I just feel like 
I never get where he's coming from when he tries to say that she's disrespectful or anything. But like I said, we don't know what really goes on, on in their relationship when they're not in front of the cameras, you know. But I just don't see her as a woman that really changes her tone too much. I've said this before in another video. She just seems kind of one tones, you know. Um, so it's kind of like she can't really win because it's like how do you feel disrespected from a woman like her where she can actually get her point across without raising her voice you know without sounding disrespectful i just don't see where CeeLo is coming from if you guys can sympathize with him or see where he's coming from let me know because i just can't to be honest with you i just can't so anyway that's just that's that and you know CeeLo is actually talking about if they can't get their communication together they are not gonna make it okay so i don't know i hope that that's not the case but let me tell you something he shouldn't have been with that woman that long okay and now you want to talk about all oh, the communication is off so now you can't be together he wasted 13 years of that woman's life if he decides to call it quits and that is not right okay there are plenty of women out here who do not know how to communicate and they when they do communicate they are very rude and their tone change and it can be very disrespectful so if he really want to see some disrespect all he got to do is date any other woman practically <laughs> i don't mean to say it like that but if, if i'm being honest I know I could be disrespectful sometimes, especially if I feel like my man is being disrespectful to me. I know I could throw on a disrespect, okay? I know I could yell. I know I could scream. So for him to say that he had a problem with her, it's a little hard for me to understand. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, okay? Anyway, but that's just something that I gotta work on, you know what I mean? I'm not saying it's good to be disrespectful. I'm just saying I don't get where CeeLo is coming from, okay? Anyway, that was my review, guys. Oh, and then on top of that, he got the nerve not to say I love you back when she said I love you. So this guy just had a straight attitude, a whole attitude. And so I don't know what's going to go on with them. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like this one. You guys be safe and be blessed. Until next time, I'll see you. Take care. Bye-bye.